this is a film of the Consolidated Time Lock Company's Dalton Dual Guard Time and Combination Lock. The Dual Guard was first produced in 1884 and was independently successful, being sold on its own for use with combination locks made by the McNeil and Urban as well as the Hall companies. The Dual Guard was an unusually expensive E. Howard movement and at $55 wholesale this small single movement exceeded that of the two movement Yale pin dial. And just to give you uh, an idea of how small this is, this is my hand. And for anyone who knows what a dual pin dial looks like, it is far, far larger. And in fact, here is a comparison of the two. Well, at first, the uh, double pin dial certainly is bigger than the uh, dual guard Dalton. When you really start looking at it carefully, outside of these pins, which allow it to be independently on or off guard during the day, the movement itself is really quite conventional. And you can see from inside here to the actual Howard movements here, they're all pretty, uh, it's a pretty conventional uh, movement as far as the complexity, the number of parts that are actually inside of this uh, particular movement. But when you compare this and in fact let me move this away so so it has a nice background there is an incredible amount of things going on inside of this lock compared again outside of just the the uh, uh, pin dials themselves this lock has many many more complexities to it Now what this lock basically had, and I'm not even going to pretend to understand everything that's going on here, uh, but this was both a time lock as well as, and you have the time lock here, as well as a combination lock, which I will show in a moment. The combination lock was actually this rotating dial here which was connected to or is connected to this gear in the back. Now this gear in the back would be connected to another gear which would then go to the actual um, uh, dial for the combination. And when this thing is actually moved if you give it a little bit of a, of a move this way, you can see it starts to actuate some of the lever work. See? And I know that this up here, which moves in conjunction with these small um, pieces here, they come up and they move this out of the way. And that is what actually, through an outside lever, uh, will lock and unlock the uh, time lock. This has its own tumbler system here which are adjustable by moving all these little small pins 
in different locations and again I cannot even pretend to understand how this all really works but it is absolutely beautifully made and here you see automatic and up here if you look carefully it says E Howard and again just to give you an idea of the multiplicity of layers of uh, different levers and gears that are inside this thing it is truly a a gearheads delight oops don't want to get my fingers in the way but I also don't want to drop it and the serial number is 727 and here is the back side and that's upside down and here I am showing both the movement itself the bear movement that uh, was shown in the prior videos and here is another one that is actually inside mounted within its case and here there is a, a lever that is missing because it actually is mounted to this here and it goes through this window and you can see it just here let me pull it up here without dropping it and it goes through you can see the window here and this is actually where the lock does its business that is where it does the unlocking for the uh, bolt work and you can see that here when it's moved backward this way see and you can see how that moves this piece here so basically what this has is a very small bolt motor built in there's a spring that's located right here and that puts this under tension and this also to then move the different lever works here and I know this is all sounding very vague but that is because I honestly don't understand exactly how this works and to be honest I don't think you're gonna find anyone else who's gonna understand exactly how it works by the way I've looked up the patents for uh, this lock they are fully 28 pages long with 14 pages of drawings uh, this is the most complicated time lock that was ever made and patent wise about three times the number of sheets maybe four uh, for the description of this and now for the coup de gras we see an example here of the Dalton triple guard this here is the double guard and the triple guard contains a double guard within a permutation within this case which also contains a permutation lock here this is an additional combination lock in addition to the small combination lock that is found here and 
I can get this open. And here, So now one can see both of the locks, the bear movement, and this one side by side. This Dalton triple guard that you see here was the most complicated and the most expensive time lock ever made. In its day, it cost $600, which in today's money would be something like around I uh, believe twelve to fourteen thousand dollars. You'll also notice some very nice decorative features, and those are seen here. And I'll try to zoom them in a little bit for accuracy. And here you can see a heart and a little portion of a duck that's in this area. And then down this way are a few more decorative features here and here. And the duck and heart are shown just a little bit more clearly here. The auxiliary permutation lock is shown here and uh, is actually uh, evidenced by this permutation lock uh, designation. And what this allowed one to do was through this additional combination lock here with the various pins that could be moved, and here's one of them, one could change the combination five different, or excuse me, six different ways from one, two, three, four, five, and six simply by moving this pointer. In addition to moving the pointer and changing the lock six different ways, one could also change the combination itself by moving the various pins within that lock. And you can see the way this moves these levers. This is then connected through this and then into the dual guard lock up here. And again, I am I am fully uh, admitting that I do not understand how all of this worked. And of course the um, uh, uh, limited amount of appeal of this lock was A, the very very expensive nature of it, and B, the fact that it probably was difficult for anyone to figure out. Now we're going to move over to the outside of this lock and we'll close this up and uh, close the front door. And of course firstly one will see uh, the decorative engraving all around the perimeter of the door even though it is a little bit worn, one, one, can, one can see it. And here is a view of the top of the case. And here we see a, uh, a hunting dog. And this is a pretty consistent theme from the hall and consolidated time locks that were um, decorated by hand. There were very few of them, but the ones that were had outdoor scenes. Clearly, Mr. Hall was a hunter 
and a fisherman because there are hunting scenes, fishing scenes, as well as sailing scenes. He clearly was an outdoorsman and we will see some of that in a moment. And here we see a side of the case and it's a little tough to film but one can see from the light a sailing scene in in the side as well as a dog on the bottom once again a hunting dog and a sailboat as well as other filigree designs on this side uh, reflecting again Mr. Hall's uh, interest in outdoor activities Again, the opposite side of what we've just seen is a close-up of the case once again with a sailing scene and the decorative work along the side. We're going to show the same on this side a little bit with a close-up again of the decoration on the opposite side of the lock with the dog on the shore and the sailboats as well as the decorative trim on the sides of the lock. And I'm sorry it's a little wobbly but this is quite heavy. And then, once again, the hunting scene on the front of the lock, which you can see the decorative scroll work on the bottom all the way across, and then the dog here against a backdrop of what looks to be a field, and we can move this back a little 